Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to do a quick and dirty build video for you. Um, it's a, a riser stand for computer monitors for my wife. She asked me yesterday if I would build her something to raise them up a little bit. She's a little bit on the uh, short side. <laughs> Although she's got a, a stand up desk, one of those that goes up and down. I just wanted to say we really appreciate you watching. If you get value out of this, smash that like button. Uh, if you're not subscribed, I, I would ask that you would consider subscribing. It doesn't cost anything and it helps our channel to grow. Basically what I'm going to do is probably rip this just about in half. I might put a profile on the front like a Roman OG. Okay, so I got them down to the same width. And just so you know, I have no plan with this. I'm just kind of winging it because this was a, she just asked me and I thought I'd go ahead and get it done. I'm going to cut this at about three feet long. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to take and square this up. Okay, so I've taken and clamped this down to where it's not going to move on me. My lovely wife, for our anniversary last year, maybe the year before, she got me some of these Bessie clamps. These are little bitty ones, but they're really, they're just pretty handy. And then the other day, while we're on the subject of clamps, she come across some of these Jorgensen's at a yard sale. For a couple bucks for I think she got either two or four of them I don't remember now but anyway you can't ever have too many clamps so I'm gonna find my mask and then we'll route this okay so I'm just taking the sand loose little fuzzy nibs off front of it doesn't look too bad. Okay, so now I've got my top done. I'm going to go like this. I need to rip these legs down. Okay, so I think I'm going to go about an inch and a quarter in from the end. Yeah, I think that's going to look all right. So I've got my holes laid out. I'm just going to use this and barely go through just so I know where to go from the other side for my pilot holes. Because this is a countersink, so I'll do that and then I'll cap the screws with the dowels. Just gonna put a little bit of glue on here. Don't have to be a whole lot of them. I'm, I'm screwing it, but the glue really does the the hard, the, the heavy lifting. But, uh, take and do that. Bad thing is, this is end grain that I'm going into, so it, it's not exactly the sturdiest. I tried to figure out how in the world I could clamp this together. I've got miter clamps but they won't work on this so if we can get this together without it coming apart hopefully this won't split I 
think I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill these other holes because that sounded like it wanted to split just a little bit. magic trick. I've got a camera person now. She's home from work. Say hey to the folks. Okay, so let's see if we can... and uh, cut it down to go right on the inside. I think I'm just going to do this like this. Okay, so I cut it down and just going to take this little bitty block plan just <clears throat> get some of the fuzzies off of here. I don't, I don't have it set very deep. I don't want it to be real deep. I just want it to smooth off that edge. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen these, these are made by Diablo. They are... Let me get this in the shot here. They're sanding, they're sanding mesh. Their package says that they last 10 times longer than a regular sanding pad. They're, they're not cheap, but they're not terribly expensive either. Um, actually, they usually have these on special at uh, Home Depot. I think I seen them yesterday for like 19 bucks for 50 of them. And it's a variety pack. This one, this package I've got I've had for a couple of years and as you can see I've still got probably 48 or <laughs> of the 50 uh, says they last 10 times longer and I, I tend to believe that because they last a long time and they're the good thing about them is they don't clog okay so I've got the round over bit in here and I've got my depth set I'm just kind of follow this around Hopefully I won't mess it up. So I went ahead and I've put the, the back on, glued it, screwed it. Um, Got to do a little clean up here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put in some dowels in these screw holes so you can just to, to plug them up and then I'll sand this and then we'll figure out what we're going to do for finish if anything okay so the next step is we're going to take and I usually just put the glue right on the dowel 
I just put just a little bit on there. It doesn't take a whole lot. I just take and uh, kind of turn it a little bit. Helps if you get it where you need it, though. Right there. These little Japanese saws here, these little pull saws, are indispensable. My wife got me this for her anniversary a year or so ago, and it is awesome. I love this thing. I liked it so much I bought my dad one for his anniversary. Or maybe I just got it for him, I don't know. But he absolutely loves it too. This is a, they call it a Shinto rasp. It's basically, it looks like a bunch of saw, uh, hacksaw blades bent. This is a fine tooth. This is a rough. You can see that or not. It's very coarse and very fine. But this thing works a treat to smooth out if you have, uh, well, like this, for instance. I could, if I wanted to, I could just do that and smooth it out. But I'm not going to. I'm going to hit that with a sander because the glue and everything will make like a, a filler and it'll make it look a little less conspicuous. I really should have got plugs. I've got a plug cutter. I should have just cut some plugs out and put in there and then I could have kind of grain match. Okay, just finished sanding. I talked to the missus and we decided we are going to go with this. It's a stain and poly combo. This being such soft wood, it's probably better to go with something like a poly anyway because It'll ding up pretty easy. Okay, let's see what this is going to look like. I don't know if you're supposed to wipe it on or wipe it off. I can't remember. I think I'm going to wipe it right back off after it sits a little bit. I can always redo it if I don't like the, the results. Uh, the neighbor's dogs are having a fit out right here. Something to make note of. Always make sure you know if this is if your finish is water-based or oil-based. I forgot that this was an oil-based urethane. Don't really like messing with oil-based stuff. I don't really like me messing with many of the finishes, but really oil-based, I definitely don't like fooling with. Just a pain to clean up. Thankfully, I had some turpentine. Another way to get a good, really cool look is get some steel wool and some vinegar, just plain old white vinegar, and put it in a jar with a lid on it. And let it sit for a day or two and it'll dissolve steel wool into the vinegar. And then you put that on your wood and it'll almost instantly do this gray look when you rev it on. You can actually even get it to go almost black just depending on how long you let it set. Okay, so it's still wet. I haven't not completely finished yet, but this will give you a general idea. I think I'm going to leave the video right here and call it good on shooting because it just takes me a long time to to set up shots and everything but this will give you a general idea what it's going to look like i'm hoping it's big enough because she's got two monitors i measured but now that i'm looking at it i always second guess myself do y'all do that 
It was cool this morning, but it's kind of warmed up out here now, so I'm going to go inside where it's a little less warm. We don't have the air on yet, but anyway. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Like and subscribe. Okay, well, it's kind of hard to see, but there's the finished product. <laughs> 